Good evening. Welcome to South Asheville Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Good to have our visitors, Bambi and Bentley. Let's give them a hand. Good to see Selena and Christy. Good to have y'all with us tonight. Praise God. Uh, good to have the Lord. He's here in this house tonight. Well, I know because I brought him with me. We bring him with us. You know, he's in us and he's with us. Praise God. It's good to be in God's house and you to, you'll worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we pray, uh, let's continue to pray for uh, Leslie, Sister Ball's uh, granddaughter, who is, has an infection behind her eye. Pray that God will heal her. Also pray for uh, the Dallas Church of God account meeting that's going on. was over our last night, and I tell you what, it is wonderful. I mean, it's just, you get such a blessing. Yes. I mean, you watch it online, it's good, but it's not like being there. Yes. I tell you, praise God. Right. And let's pray for them, the souls will be saved. That there's some, some young people who are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They drove from California right. out to Dallas, North Carolina. They want to receive the Holy Ghost. Let's pray that you know, God will you know, uh, fill all of them with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Also, continue praying for Sister Ball's brother. He's recovering from knee surgery. Uh, continue praying for Pastor and Sister Key. Pray that God will completely heal her body. Uh, Sister Ball was telling me there was a helicopter crash in West Virginia. Pray for all those involved. There's no details on it. Pray for her Sister Chastity. She's having some back pain. That God will reach down and touch and heal her back. Pray for Joey and Raylan. That you know, I was hoping he'd be here tonight. I like to see him. You know, get in here and get you know involved and get committed to the Lord. Praise God. Does anybody else have a prayer request tonight that wasn't mentioned? Harold Hamilton family. Yes, pray for Beth Small. That God will heal her from this hip surgery. Yes, uh, remember Brother Milken, he had some foot surgery on Tuesday, so remember him in prayer that God will give him a quick recovery. Yes, pray for Sister Ball. She needs a touch on her body tonight. And pray for Sister Milken. She has a problem with that shoulder, and so pray for her. She, that's a continual problem that she has. Yes, sir. Yes, let's pray for little Joshua, you know, had that bi bicycle accident, got skinned up. I know he just had a birthday. He should have known better. He's old enough to know better than how the accident, didn't he, sister? Uh, wishing him a belated happy birthday, too. Anybody else? <coughs> yes, pray for Sister Amy's job situation. God's able to intervene there and make a way where there seems to be no way. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. Yes, Pray for Haley. She started a new job today. Pray for her that God will be with her and help her. And you know, she Haley is uh, kind of kind of backwards. She's shy and everything, and she she just I'm mean, I'm just to be honest about it. She she she's not really got socialized, you know, with people and everything. She's just and but maybe this will bring her out of her shell a little bit because she's like she's in a cocoon. God will bring her out. Anybody else have a request? Stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I saw God, the light, I saw the light, Lord, God, Lord, the light. Lord, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light.
God. And uh, praise God. Now, I forgot to mention, do be praying for Brother Albright as he brings the word of God before us tonight also. You know, God sometimes used difficult, uh, difficulties and hardships to try his children to see if they will remain faithful. He did that to Job. He allowed it. He allowed Satan to afflict Job to see if Job would remain faithful. Right. Job said in uh, Job 23 and 10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Right. You know, God will allow trials to continue the refining process in our lives. So, you know, if you're going through something, say God is bringing me, he's allowing it, he's going to bring me through it, and it's for a purpose. It's to make us stronger, to see if we're going to be, remain faithful. Yes. Praise God. Let's continue to worship as uh, Sister Sharon and I come and minister in song. Y'all pray for us. Bless the Lord.
The battle is most won, the trumpet will be sounding, the coming of the sun. I'll lay my armor down, take up my robe and crown, and I'll walk the golden streets with my Lord. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Praise God. We've got to stay on that battlefield for the Lord. You know, we got to fight this fight all the way home. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I've run my race. You know, we got to do the same thing. It's a battlefield. We've got to fight the fight, the good fight of faith. Let's continue to worship and give and get our ushers to come and receive the offering at this time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Jalen, you want to come help serve? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Brother Albright, would you pray with us time of worship? May God richly bless you. Be faithfulness and giving. This time I have Sister Amy and Sister Andrea to come and minister in song. Praise God. Bless them, Lord. While she's coming, you know, if you've been watching any of the account meeting over at Dallas, that same God that's over there is the same God that's here tonight. We just got to worship him. Let us worship him in spirit and truth tonight. Praise God. Sanctify me. Keeps on sanctifying me. Amen. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Oh, it's coming real soon for us. Amen. Take us out of this old wicked sin cursed world. When you see Amen. 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 Go ahead, Sister Angel.
praise the Lord. Keep going down. 
down and getting back up till I see a change or feel a touch from you. I know you're hearing me. Oh, yes, this place is lonely and it's cold, but it's holy ground. So I'm told the secret place where you will meet with me. God, God honors consistency. You know, if he tells you to dip seven times, six times won't do. We've got to be faithful to the very end. Praise God. This time I'll turn to service our pastor, Brother Shelton. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand of praise tonight. How many know God's a faithful God? How many here has ever been put in a tight place, a tight spot? That was impossible for man. Nothing that man could do to help you, to relieve you, to get you out of that place. But then God showed up. And sometimes God shows up just suddenly. And he moves in our life. Other times he makes us wait there for a while. We don't always know what God's doing, but we know that God is always working. God is always moving. Can you say praise the Lord? I want to encourage you. Uh, if you have access to Facebook or uh, YouTube, you can go on YouTube or you can go on the Dallas Church of God website. I want to encourage you to watch those services this week. You get some time. If you can't watch it during the service time itself, find some time. Listen to that preaching. We were privileged to be over there Monday and got home this afternoon. And uh, I tell you that those some of the greatest preaching you will hear on this side of heaven. And uh, what a wonderful atmosphere, people worshiping. I told somebody last night, a preacher friend of mine, I said, I wish everybody would get this and take it back to the church, their local church, and we'd have that kind of atmosphere in our local churches. Amen? That don't just have to be a camp meeting atmosphere. We can have that in the local church. If you put in, you'll get something out. If you don't put in, you won't receive anything. Amen? I'm glad to be here. I told Brother Albright, I said, you better do good tonight. I've sat through three days of just outstanding preaching. And uh, Brother Charlie said last night, he said, I don't want to go after that. I don't want to get up there tonight. Brother Albright's going to speak for us. I appreciate him helping us out this evening. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from the Word of God. Good to have Bambi with us tonight. Appreciate her and love her. Known her a long time. I told her I had COVID brain or either old one. I, I recognized her, but I couldn't remember who she was. And then it just clicked. And uh, nevertheless, we're glad she's with us in the house of God tonight. Bentley, her son, glad to have him. He's going back in the children's church now. All of you, good to see Shauna. Uh, glad she's coming back. We love her and appreciate her. We've missed her. I'm glad she's back in God's house. Good to see Selena tonight. Good to have Christy from California. Glad she's in the house of God with us as well. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Brother Albright, come on. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God. Hey, what? I kind of, kind of feel like a Brother Carter on Monday night. He wasn't supposed to speak, but he got called into it. He was talking about he, how he was an old mill hand. And he said, you know, they had what they call spare hands. And he said, well, his fire hand didn't work every day, so he didn't know what to do. So he didn't know when to quit. So that's the way I am tonight. I got this lesson up, and I started getting it together. I told my wife at one time, I said, well, I got enough about an hour and a half here. She said, you better start cutting that down. <laughs> so, so, so we did cut it down. But uh, she might be waving her hand before we get out of here tonight. If you would, turn to chapter 25 of Matthew. 
Yeah, we kind of thought along with Brother, Brother Shelton. He spoke last Wednesday night. I said, well, me and you are on the same track. Then Brother Charlie jumped in here Sunday, jumped on the track with us, so I'm just going to finish it on out tonight. I got a little lengthy text, so if you would turn to Matthew chapter 14. I mean, uh, verse 14, cha chapter 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country, and calleth his own servants, and delivereth them his goods. This traveling man could be Jesus going back to heaven. And it said to, to one, I, he gave five talents, and to another two talents, and to one one talent, every man according to his severe ability, and straightway took his journey. And when he had received the five talents, went and traded with the same, and, and made them other five talents. Likewise, him who received the two also gained other two. He received the one, went and dug in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. And a long time after the Lord of those servants cometh, he reckoned with them. And so that he that received the five talents came and brought him five talents, saying, Lord, thou hast delivered to me five talents. I have gained besides them five talents more. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter there unto the joy of thy Lord. Also he received the two talents, came and said, Lord, thou hast given to me two talents, and I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thine unto the joy of the Lord. Then which he had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not sown, and I have was afraid, and went and I hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, thou hast at that, this, this, at that, that at thine. And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thy wicked and slowful servant, thy newest that I reaped where I sowed not, and I guess what I have not bestowed. Thou shouldest therefore have put my money to the exchangers, and to them at my coming I will receive mine own with usury. Take the I for the talent from him, and give it to him which hath ten talents. And to every one that has shall be given, to him that has abundance, but to him that have not shall be taken away, even to him which has. And cast thy unprofitable servant into outer darkness, thou shalt be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to just read just a small portion of verse 15. For he was given out the talent. He said he give according to his severe ability. Every man according to his ability. The Amplified said, to each in portion to his own personal ability. And verse 30 kind of worries you too when you get to look at verse 30. And cast thy unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's go to the Lord in praise, if we will. Father, Lord, as we come before thee, dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in the house of God again tonight, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings you bestowed upon us, dear Lord. Lord, as we come before thee to this message tonight, dear Lord, Lord, we ask that you reach down and anoint and touch me, dear Lord. Give me the words to say, dear Lord. I can't do nothing without you, dear Lord. Lord, I know I'm just a speaker, dear Lord. I'm a voice of the kingdom of God, dear Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you touch, dear Lord. The Holy Ghost may have complete rule, dear Lord. Lord, if something we say may touch someone, dear Lord, to put a desire in their hearts, dear Lord, they go to work for them, work for the hidden kingdom of God, dear Lord. Strength us and guide us, dear Lord. Guide our ever thoughts, dear Lord. And every word as we come before thee, dear Lord. Lord, your will may be done in every life, dear Lord. Strengthen us, dear Lord, and use us for the glory of God, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. As I said, read this, and a lot of times a person says, well, what can I do? I don't know. I, I, I really can't do nothing. But he said in the talents that he give every man according to his ability. We've all got something that we can do for the kingdom of heaven. He didn't call us out just to come out and sit on the bench and call us up here to save us. So he's called us out to be workers for the kingdom of God. James said, I show you my faith by my works. 
Our works ain't going to lend us into heaven. But if our faith, we got faith in God and serving Him, we're going to have works, whatever our works may be. You know, the slothful servant, he didn't have no works. And he's he's going to be cast into out of darkness. I'm afraid a lot of times if we're not working for the kingdom of God, we might be one of those that says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because everybody that comes up and says, Lord, Lord's not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. He had three servants. It he, he was all servants to the master. But he came. He found one that was lazy. He wasn't doing nothing. He was just sitting there. The brother Charles says, My four, no more. Yeah, you know, he said, I'll just keep what I got and not worry about it. But, you know, we've got to go far and work for the kingdom of God. Continue to work for him. You know, the pastor last Wednesday night preached in Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 37. We talked about the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Praise the Lord that he'll send harvesters. You know, we're all the time praying to the Lord. Lord, send somebody, send it. But what about me, Lord? Why ain't I praying? Yet? Why ain't I going out? It's always pray for somebody else to go out. We have to go forth to the kingdom of God. Say, Lord, I want to go out. I want to win souls to the kingdom of God. Everybody you talk to says, take back where the Lord's coming any day now. Well, why ain't the church bitches is full? People really believe that. They'd be filling the house of God up. The churches would be out working for God, trying to bring people in, trying to get people to serve God. We all have excuses of why we're not doing this. I can't do it. You know, we ain't the first one to offer excuses for not being able to serve God. We ain't the first no excuses because we'll come out and knock on the door. Moses was the same way. If you remember when God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush, told Moses, said, you go talk to Pharaoh. Tell him to let my people go. You know, I thought of that, and I thought, well, you know, that'd be just like going up here and telling the pastor, said, Brother Shelton, you go talk to Joe Biden and tell him what needs to be done in the White House. First thing goes, well, how am I supposed to get in there to see Joe Biden? You know, I ain't nobody. And that's kind of what Moses felt like. I didn't know, how, how can I get in there and talk to Pharaoh? But God told him, he said, go. He was making every excuse he could to go. Well, Lord, you know, said, I ain't a fluid of speech. So well, I'm not either. I just was up here and talk. I'm a country boy. He said, I'm slow of speech. You know, I might stutter. But God said, Moses, who made that mouth? You know, I, I've often thought, you know, Moses wouldn't have stuttered if he'd just yield before God. He said, God, here am I. Use me. But Moses is trying to every excuse to keep from having to go to do the work of God. Sometimes we're the same way. We try every excuse we can to get out of it. Lord, I can't go there. I can't talk to people. I can't knock on the door. I can't witness to people. But that's what we called out. We called out to be witnesses. We called out to go for him to witness the kingdom of God. There's no reason we can't go out and witness and knock on the doors. I guarantee you, I've said it before and I still say it. When you knock on that door and that man comes open that door, are you just going to stand there and look at him? You think of something to say. God will give you something to say. You won't just be looking at him. You're just going to, I never forget you to me and Sister Tina, Sister Sheridan, and Sister Albright went out witnessing one Saturday. Never forget going to that house in the street and the big sign there. I mean, signs all over that man's yard. It said, Beware of dogs. Nobody wanted to get out of the car. And I, Got my little track, and I said, I go. And I went up there. That's a brave old dog as long as your back was turned. Boy, he was doing some nipping and a barking and a snapping. I went up there, and that man said, didn't you see the signs? I said, yeah, I saw the signs. I, I wanted to give you a track anyway and invite you to church. Got back in the car, and Sister Tina said, didn't them dogs scare you? And I said, well, yeah, but I figured God could protect Daniel from lions. He could protect me from the dogs. So, you know, we just have to go forward for God. Do it. You know, put our faith in God and step up. Sometimes it's hard, but we have to go anyway. Don't make excuses. God made a way for Moses. He'll make a way for us if we'll just step forward and go forward. Say, Lord, I'm ready to work. I'm going to go forward for you. You know, there's no song out there that you used to hear a sing all the time called out. I haven't heard it in years. But it says, we've been called out for a purpose. I just went on the line and looked at the course of that song. He said, you've been called out to be a servant. You've been called out to lift up a standard. And I thought, good Lord, what kind of standard is the church are lifting up today? Where are we at in the world? No wonder the world's in the shape it's in that the way the standards of the church is lifting up. When you see out here that you can't tell the church from the world and the world from the church, what kind of standard is that? Used to, the church had a, 
a saying in the way the laws was run, the way the lands was run. They looked to God in the church. The college used to be run by Christian professors. The schools, the children was taught in schools, the Bible. We was taught Bible verses in school. We was asked to speak Bible verses in the fourth grade. I mean, that teacher give us extra credit for Bible verses we'd learn. Lord knows in the fourth grade was hard for me. I needed all the Bible verses I could get. But you know, she gives that. But today they don't even want the Bible in school. You know, we talk about it all the time. The devil don't mind if you come to church just as long as you don't worship him and praise him. Well, you know, the devil's got in their schools too. I tell the pastor, the dad's reading with the Catholic Church, believe it, said they get them at the age of seven years old or four years old. They could bring them up. They could teach them what they want to. Well, that's exactly what they've done to school. The devil's got into the school now. He's teaching them evolution. You know, that evolution, yes, there's never been no proof of evolution. We got proof. We got witnesses of 6,000 years of the Bible. Everything below that, there's no witness to it. There's no nothing. It's just man's theory. What he goes by. They said they took these, uh, what, I don't know what I'm trying to call them now. But the things in rocks and we see fish bones and all and study them, tell how old they are. They say they're millions of years old. They were fossils. They said, well, the scientists has got these fossils and they figured out how to make a fossil. So they made their own fossil. Then they figured out how to study that fossil, tell how old it was. They're using that to go back and say the earth is billions of years old, but we're using modern fossils and modern technology to tell us how old the earth is. All we've got to do is pick up the Bible and look at the Bible and see how old the world is. 6,000 years ago, God made heaven and earth. He formed this place in six days. I was reading through that book. I bought while I was, went to see the ark exhibit. Talk about the majority of the Christian churches today and the Christian schools. Don't teach the full six days that God created heaven and earth and man and animal. They don't believe it all happened just like the Bible said in six days. There's other ways. But that's the only way it happened. We've got proof of it through the word of God. You know, he said we called out to lift up a standard. You know, used to, you, they was a standard in the church of God. They had a standard in all the churches. You go by, you could go to a Baptist church. And they was living a holy life. It was the holiest church. The message is holy. The Western is holy. The church of God is holy. Today you don't know what you're going to get. You watch them as they took these trips uptown praying at the courthouse. Half of them look like they come from the beach. They don't. None of them look holiness. So what in the world does, are we doing? You know, people look at us and say, well, what kind of standards the church are holding anymore? You can't tell them they look like us. They go where we go. They do the things we do. We've got to lift up that holy standard. He says that holiness no man's going to enter in. That's something people used to not think about. They said a holiness church was a religious church. But today you talk about being a holiness church, and they don't want to hear that. They want to live the way of the world, take up the world, walk with the world, and be seen with the world. They don't want to come out from them and be separate. They want to blend right in. That's what the church has got to do today, trying to blend in with the world, trying to match up where they don't come out and be separate. We've got to be a different people. We've got to be that peculiar people that called us, God called us out to be. He told us he called us out of the world. That's what said he called us out of the world. We're a separate people. Israel was a separate people. He told them not to mingle with thee. But today we want to go in and mingle with the world and take up what the world's done. I thought, you know, if we was Israel today, God would have cast us out just like he did Israel. We had to walk in a holy way, walk before him, hold on to the laws that God has set before us, walk with him and keep, keep us in his will. You know, we need to pray a lot of times like Paul did on the road to Damascus. That light behind down, Paul fell on the ground, and the Lord spoke to Paul. Paul said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Paul was ready to go forth and do whatever God told him. That's why we need to pray, Lord, what do you have me to do? And I know God's not going to tell us, I have you to just go sit in the church and sit on the bench and don't you do nothing. No, God's going to tell us what to do. We'll just let our ears be open to him. If we'll pray for him in sincerity, he'll tell us what to do and he'll lead us and he'll guide us. We haven't got to worry about what's going to happen. God is all do all things for us. Paul says that in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. You know, if God didn't strengthen me, I couldn't be up here tonight. 
I was that little boy at school that couldn't even give a book report. Boy, I'd get up in front of that class and just shake all over. I couldn't give a book report. I was scared to death. God had to help me. God has to help me to get up here. I said, Lord, don't you let me go up there by myself. You know, as long as I do my part, God will do his. I had to get up here and get scared to death all of a sudden go to shaking like I did when I was in school. But God is always there with us. I told the pastor when I came here today, I told him, I said, I'll do anything I can do in the church. All you got to do is ask. I didn't know what he was going to ask me to do, but I knew what Paul said. And I said, well, if God will strengthen me, God will give me way, the spirit to do it, I can do it. We have to listen to the voice of God. Oh, go out. Isaiah prayed in Isaiah 6 and 8. He prayed that God did use him. He said, the Lord said, who will I send? Isaiah prayed, said, Lord, here I am. Send me. That's the way we need to pray. We need to get in the altar. said, Lord, here I am. Send me wherever you have me to go, whatever you have me to do. I'm willing to go, Lord. I'll carry the banner. He said, Lord, send me. I prayed a lot of times in the altar. Lord, here I am. Send me. Whatever you want me to do, I'll try to do it. God's not going to let us down. If he'll send you out, he'll make a way for you to do it. If he sends you the witness, he'll give you the words to say to him. God's not going to let you down. If you'll work for the kingdom of God, he'll work for you. He'll not let you go. You know, we, uh, I'll just go ahead and read to you. In Luke 8, 38 to 39, Jesus had just landed and cast out devils out of the demons out of the man in the tombs. And he said, now the man came out whom the de- devils were departed. The, let me start over. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. He returned into thy own house and showed thy great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things had God had done to him. You know, he published to his house. He sent him to his own house to testify. How many of us have got lost loved ones in our house? Our children's lost. Our spouse's lost. Our family got different members that's lost. We think a lot of times we say, Lord, send me out, do whatever you would he might be sending us to a thong hood, but he might be sending us right to our own home just as he did that man. He knew that he had lost family. He sent him to his own home. And because he went to his house witnesses, he said the whole city was one to the kingdom of God. They heard the kingdom of God. It's like that Philippian jailer. When Paul went up there witness to him, he said him and his house was saved. I pray, Lord, all the time, every night. There's not a night to go by I don't pray for my children. They was brought up in a holiness church, a Pentecostal church, you know what it is. They departed from the faith. I give them to God when they're small children. I dedicate them to God, and I remind God all the time, God, I dedicate them to you for your children. Don't close the doors on them. Don't shut that door. I know you ain't going to force them to live for you, but keep that spirit in them. Keep that conviction upon their hearts that they'll know. Don't give up. You know, he told that in Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel, he said, I'm not sending you out. To a people that's hard, hard, hard to speak or you don't know, understand. He's not sending them out to the foreign land. He's not sending us out to the foreign land, the mission field. Lord, I love the mission field. I love mission work. I could go to Mars. Somebody get up a bus and let's strike out. Love to go. But he, you know, we, we got a mission field here in Ashburn. We got a mission field in Randolph County. You know, those disciples that said... They turned the world upside down for Jesus. What could we do? If we just yield before him, give ourselves to him and say, Lord, here am I, use me. He'll send us forth. You know, we're good witnesses. Not just in Samaritan, other parts of the world. We'd be some witnesses here in Ashburn. Take that word to them. Take those that's turned their back on God and went back and picked up the world. I say right now, if you're watching online, you going to a church that's went back and picked up the world. Get back in a hole in this church where you belong before the Lord comes. I guarantee you the Lord's coming. It's not going to be long. Yeah. And I'm afraid there's going to be a whole lot of depart from me. You know, we're going to all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I want to be able to hear that word, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I think the saddest thing a man could ever hear would be 
Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. There's no other chance. That's eternity. You know, we think a lot of times right now, I'm 70 years old. And you're somebody who's older than I am, but that 70 years has gone by fast. But now when you look at yourself with 70 years, that's a long time. That's nothing compared to eternity. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to spend eternity in that lake of fire. I want to spend it in paradise with my Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible talks about not adding to the word of God or taking away. I've added a couple of words to the verse here, and I'm going to read it to you. But I don't think it's really adding to the word. I think it's just adding on to where the word cut off. Ezekiel 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Then I added on. Some prayer warriors, some encouragers. You know, we can't all go out and knock on doors. Some people's not able to get out there. They say, well, I, I can't drive. I can't get out like that. My health is bad. But you can be a prayer warrior. God's got prayer warriors, too, that gets out there and prays and says, Lord, I can't go, but I'm praying for the ones that is going. I'm praying for the ones that's knocking on the doors that you'll give them souls for the heart, Lord. Lord, you'll give them the words to say, and you'll lead them to the house that needs to be led to. I think when I think about the old prayer warriors, I think about Jamaica. You know, we sit up there in the choir, and the choir is just like this. And over here on the wall, they've got a bunch of chairs and a bunch of ladies sitting over in these chairs. That's the prayer warriors. Now, if you want to hear somebody pray, you call one of them prayer warriors to pray. You see a woman that's been close to God. That woman prays, and she prays, and she prays, and she prays. That woman knows how to reach God. You know, we need prayer warriors. We need more of them today. A lot of things in history we read about was done because of prayer warriors. I read about D.L. Moody. I might have brought this out in the Sunday school class one time. The D.L. Moody was preaching over here. He had preached, you know, he was a hard worker for the kingdom of God. I said he was just wore out, drugged down from the war, and preaching to everybody every day. Said he had to have a break. He just gonna have to take a break. And he's gonna go off. He's gonna go to England. He's gonna get him some rest. Well, there's a woman over in England thought they needed a revival. She didn't know D. L. Moody. What's the matter? All she done was heard about D. L. Moody. How he had a revival over here in the United States. She wanted to come to England. So she went to pray, and God sent D.L. Moody to England. Send D.L. Moody to England. We need a revival. Well, D.L. Moody didn't know she was praying. He was going to England to rest. Said he got over there said the first day. Said a minister of a church come over there on Sunday. Asked him, said, how about come speaking to my church Sunday morning? So he finally agreed to go over and speak to him. D.L. Moody spoke to him in D.L. Moody's book. He said, that is the coldest, driest church I've ever been in in my life. And there wasn't no spirit whatsoever in that church. He left, and he's going to go on his vacation. So the pastor called him and said, can you come back and preach again? So something's happened in my church. D.L. Moody went back and preached. It's like a different church. He said, the Holy Ghost fell in that church. People was being saved. He stayed over and worked all because one little woman prayed. They had a prayer warrior that prayed. And God reached down and heard the answer to prayer and sent D.L. Moody over there. The Azusa Street Revival started because of a prayer warrior. One, one man, one blind black preacher wanted the Holy Ghost. He went to pray and that's something different. He wanted more. He didn't want to be satisfied where he's at. He wanted more of it. We all read now about the Azusa Street Revival here, but all because somebody was a prayer warrior said, I won't stop till God sends something. The Welch Revival all started by prayer warriors praying. Man, if we could pray like that Welch Revival, you see all the alcohol leaving Randolph County. They closed the bars in there. God reached down. I wouldn't 
prayer warriors to go out. We got to have those prayer warriors. We got to all have a job to do. You can't go out and pray for the ones that will go out. But don't make excuses like Moses did. He said, you can go out, go out. Witness to somebody. Witness to your family. You can't witness to nobody else. And we need encouragers. You know, we had a great encourager in here in this church at one time. Sister Mary Lux. That woman, she's in, the most encouraging woman. I said it at her funeral. I said, that woman encouraged you. I said, you could get up here and teach. Go back to sit down. I said, boy, I made a flop out of that. That's the worst I believe I've ever done. And she'd come up and shake your hand and say, I appreciate you. You've done a good job this morning. And I said, well, Lord, she must have heard something I didn't say. Or I said something that I didn't remember saying or something. Cause it felt like, but she was encouraging. There's a lady from over to North Ashbury, Sister Carter. Sister Carter, she was the same way. She'd encourage her. She'd send you a note in the mail, encouraging, telling you how good a job you're doing. Went to a funeral home one night, and she was carrying me around there. Before, so this is my Sunday school teacher. This is my Sunday school teacher. Encouraging me. Yeah, that's what I say. Sometimes we get discouraged. It don't matter if it's a preacher or a teacher, Sunday school teacher. We all have times of discouragement when it gets us. The devil likes to discourage us. But you can be an encourager. Get up and pat him about. You've done a good job. We we'll appreciate the way you're doing. Appreciate you staying. Tell me, love you, brother. Encourage him to go forward for thee. You know, our, uh, Brother Jones was preaching in here, and I can't remember what the title of the subject was. But he was preaching about how God had told him to go out to all the world and preach the gospel. And a lot of times you say, well, I can't go out. He said, I'm, that's the preacher's job. That's what we pay you for, to go out. That's like he said, it wasn't the preachers, it wasn't the apostles that had seen their dead raised from the dead. It wasn't the ones that had seen the eyes open. Or the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk. But it was Philip, a deacon, a layman in the church, was the first one that went out. And I've often wondered, what is Peter and John doing sitting there in Jerusalem while that deacon's out here preaching the gospel? But you know, he could use each one of us. If we'll just yield before him, say, here I am, Lord, use me. Send me wherever you wouldn't go, Lord. I'll be your vessel. I'll do what you ask me to do. We'll go forward. He'll do it. Yeah, let's talk about the old prayer warriors. I just seen a verse I've gone to bring in, but Matthew 17, verse 20. He's talking about if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could say, Yon mountain be removed and cast the seed, and he'll be done. Well, I heard the story of a little old lady that couldn't go to church on Sunday morning. It was too far to go. She had to go around the mountain to get to church. And there wasn't nobody, she couldn't walk it. And nobody there to carry her. People made fun of her, but she started praying, God, move this mountain. Now you think, well, that's a dumb prayer, but that's what the Bible said. You could say, you know, said she prayed for years, Lord, move this mountain. So one day she's sitting in the house of prayer, and she heard a racket outside. She went out there and looked, and there was the dozers and the road graders and everything there. Said the interstates are coming through here and we're going to have to go through this mountain. It's just amazing what God will do if we're this year before him. Yes, God says, Lord, I'm going to be up prayer. I'm going to spend my time in prayer. You know, when your prayer wars more than now, lay me down to sleep. It's reaching out to God and praying until we reach God. Praying to God answers prayer. I guess the looking here, you know, you get going sometimes, it's hard to stop, brother. You know, <coughs> God has a desire for all of us. I pray, Lord, give me the zeal that Paul had. You know, Paul was a man that wasn't going to let nothing stop him from taking the word of God. He was told at one time, said, if you go, you'll be put in prison. He said, well, if they put me in prison, I have to kill me, that's all right, but I'm a going. He didn't care. You know, Paul's idea of being in prison, he had a captive audience. You know, they're like, they chained him to the guards. Throw him into prison. I can preach to them. When he got where he couldn't preach, he said, well, I like 
to write letters of encouragement to my churches. Paul would not give up. Nobody could stop Paul. That's the zeal we need to say, I'm going to go on. If I can't do it, I'll encourage somebody else to do it. I work for him. That feels hard. It's the soil out there. We've got to go out. Not just pray for labor, but say, Lord, here am I. Use me. I'll go out. You know, the title of this lesson tonight will change my I can't to I can. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we'll get to thinking about that next time you say, well, I can't. Think of that verse in first, first, uh, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I've read this in a little poem in the Sunday school class before, but I'm going to read it again. A good friend of mine, he used to, I go to, went to school with him, used to every birthday he'd send me a poem. But it's always about me getting older. And I don't know why he wanted to pick on me for getting older and send me a poem every time. <coughs> but he sent me this poem. It's called Little Paul. He said, Paul was physically a very short man. He skipped the I can't. He majored in the I can. But he learned what who really had the power. And he focused on God from air to air. One day the Savior overpowered little Paul. And throughout history, he stood very tall. And you know Paul was four foot six. Just look at all the travel and adventures throughout the land. What statue he required. By taking a stand. Now realize the example that we all see. The same spirit is available now to you and me. I claim mine. How about you? Let's all see what we can do. You know, I like that Paul got to be a big man by taking a stand. Paul didn't let nothing bring him down. He wouldn't let nobody change him. He said, if anybody preaches anything other than what I've preached, let him be accursed. We know what holiness is. We've got the word of God here to give us our road map to heaven. No matter what anybody tells you, stick to that word. That's what's going to take you through. They can tell you all these things. Well, we don't believe it like that or we've learned better, but show it to me. Show it to me in the word of God which changed. He said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday. He has not changed. His word has not changed. He still requires the same. Let's walk with him. Hey, Lord, I can do it if you'll just carry me through. There's nothing I can't do with Jesus Christ walking with me, carrying me through. He's there for us. You know, I was thinking, I'm kind of finishing up this here. I was thinking about when I got saved. I was thinking about when you got saved. You know, I don't know what you was doing when you was living in the world of sin. You don't know what I was doing. Well, I might have said something about it in Sunday school or sometimes speaking up here. But, you know, I know when I came to that altar that Sunday morning, I made all kinds of promises to God what I would do. God, if you'll just save me, I'll work for you. I'll do whatever you want to. I'll be faithful. I made those vows to God, and God saved me. And I wonder, have you ever sat down and just thought, what did I promise God that I'd do? Have I, am I doing it today as I promised? They say it's better not to make a vow than to make one and break it. We have to honor God with what we said we're going to do. Yeah, I, ha I have a desire to serve God, do what he wants me to do. I want to hear his voice speaking. I want to know when to go out. I want to know when to come in. I want to know who to testify to and what to say. You know, you say, well, I don't know how to talk to them, but we all got a testimony. God delivers you from something. He's delivered me from something. We all got something we can testify about. Just tell somebody your testimony. Wasn't that what Paul done to King Agrippa? He just told him his testimony. King Agrippa said, I think you. You know, Paul, you're much learning. It's making you crazy. You know, but he said, almost I persuaded me. You never know when you want to, your old testimony might persuade somebody to give their heart to God. You never know when your testimony might plant that seed if somebody comes right behind and waters. Then God gives the increase. We have to do our job. We like to say God added to the church daily, 
But what are we doing? You know, God expects us to do something too. If we want God to add to the church daily, let's be workers for the kingdom of God. Like I said, all you got to do is look out here and you see the fields is white. You ride down the road Sunday afternoon, and I guarantee you Walmart's is full, the restaurants is full, Lowe's is full, and the church parking lot's half empty. What's wrong with the Christians today? Where's our standard we're holding up? We've got to get back in the fire with God, get back on the right track. He said it's a narrow path that we're going to go. Straight and narrow. Today we've got to waver a little this way, and waver a little this way. Like Jeremiah, Lord, let's turn them to the old path. That's the one that's going to lead us to heaven. That's the way we're going to have to make it. We make it in. We have to follow that straight and narrow path to make it to heaven. Lord, help me go back to the old path. I think, you know, these pastors talk about, you know, how we're too strict, that we're running our young people off. But now as a boy growing up, the church was full of young people. And it was a lot stricter than it is today. I don't know what's what got into people, you know, thinking all of a sudden we're running them off because we're too strict. But yet we're not strict enough. We've got to let everything go over and let the devil take over and rule our young people. we got to stand up for Jesus. The song says, I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by. This old world's going to have to go by. We can't be no part of this world. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Sometimes you think, well, I've lived in this home 45 years, or I've lived in this home. No, you had this world just... We're passing through. My home's up there. It's up there beyond the blue. I'm looking for the day he calls us home. I got a mansion prepared for me. And Brother Paul Reader always said, just as soon as God gets through this mansion, I'm, my mansion, I'm going home. You know, he's working on our mansion today, and it ain't going to be long. I think he's just about got it done. Construction's just about through, and he's going to call his church home. But it's going to be his church. It's not going to be everything that calls itself a church. I think a lot of these things cause ourselves a church. It would be the first church of Inkabod. The glory of God has departed. I told you, I told that church that day, God has done left the pulpit and he's gone in the best of you. You can invite him back in or you can let him go out the door. Today, God has gone out the door of many churches. They're not walking the way of the holiness. They're not walking the way God called us to do. It, 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 it just upsets me when I see what the church is today. I know what I growed up in. I know that I was thinking it's all the services at Dallas during this camp meeting. I said, they used to have all the services when I was a boy growing up. Them people would get in the altar. They'd go to praying. Somebody would fall out in the spirit. First thing, that, that altar service might last two hours. It might last three. You didn't know when it was going to ever be over. I told you when I was a little boy and that preacher gave out altar call, I said, oh, no, we're never going home now, you know. Because we didn't know. People was wanting to serve God. They want to honor God. That's what we've got to do. Say, Lord, I want to honor you. If you want me to work for you, i work for you. Just give me the work you want me to do. I can do all things with Christ and strength. Turn my eye can't into an eye can. Let me go out and work for the kingdom of God. God, I can stand up here and talk about working for the kingdom of God all night. How good God has been to me, where he's brought me from. I got all kinds of testimony of what God has done for me, where he's delivered me. And I'm sure each one of you can stand up and say what God has delivered you from. Use that to somebody out there to tell them it's lost. Tell them what God has delivered you from, how he loved you. Like in the, them story of the talents I was reading in D.L. Moody's book. If you don't know, I like D.L. Moody. So reading in D.L. Moody's book, he's talking about how he got full of the hooks. He's wanting to preach. He's wanting to talk. To Didn't have no learning. He said, you could see. He said, I could see the old people looking at me. Saying, Why don't he sit down and be quiet, you know? So he said, I finally just went out on the street and started talking to the children. He said, that first Sunday, I brought 18 children to church with me. He said, I didn't know nothing about the Bible, not that much, just what he could learn. He wasn't a learned man. But he said, I could tell them how Jesus loved them, and I knew the 23rd Psalm, and I'd tell them the 23rd Psalm. 
He said, I'd go out the next week and work again. And said, you know, the Lord started giving me more and more talents as I went out. God would give me more to do. And we'll do the same thing. If we'll just go out, God will give us more and more to do. All we've got to do is be that willing vessel. And God will work with us. I'm going to let the pastor have to get to the altar service. Everybody stand, please. Everybody stand tonight. Before God can work and use us to work through us, God has to do that work in us. You can't go out until God's done that work in your life, changed your life. When He does that, when He saves you, I believe there ought to be a desire in people to go tell somebody else what Christ has done. That's biblical, that's scriptural. You read those that come in contact with Jesus and He changed their lives. The first thing they did was go tell somebody else about what He's done. Amen. If you'll play softly, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. We want to pray and give an altar invitation. First of all, first and foremost, if you're not saved, you need Jesus. Your time is going to run out. Your time is going to run out. Every second that passes, we're all a step closer to eternity. We have a short time here on this earth. I told you on Sunday night, the scary thing is we don't, not one of us, Sunday morning rather, we don't know when we're going to leave here. None of us know when we're going to die. We could die tonight. We could live 10 more years. We can live 15 more years. We don't know that. That's why the Bible tells us we have to make sure that we're prepared, that we're ready to meet the Lord today. Today. If you're here tonight and you're lost, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, it's more than just naming Him. It's more than just saying, I'm a Christian. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that, but they don't bear that Christian fruit in their life. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit, the fruit they bear. If you're lost, if you're not saved, if you're not ready for heaven, these altars are open for you to come. I sure don't want to close this service out and not give everybody a chance. My prayer is everybody in this congregation saved tonight. Every one of us ready for heaven. But if you're not, if you're lost, if you're not living for Jesus, these orders are open for you to come. You can be changed tonight. Your life can be completely changed. God can come into your heart, save your soul, change everything about you. It is the greatest thing that can happen to any person on this earth is to be born again, to accept Jesus into their heart and life. He doesn't just patch things up. He makes a new creature out of us. He doesn't just fix a few things here and there that need fixing. He does everything new in our life. He puts a desire in us to want to live for Him. Anybody here tonight, you need to be saved. If you're away from the Lord, you're a backslider, you need to return to Him. Would you come tonight? Would you come? Very quickly. Would you come? Would you come, please? If you're watching online and you're a sinner, if you're not saved, you better make things right with God. Better make sure that you've got everything under the blood, that you have surrendered your heart and your life to Jesus. If you die and go to hell, my friend, I told you on Sunday, it is forever. It is forever. There's no coming back from that place. Having said that, Brother Albright said it tonight, we've got family, we've got loved ones that are going there. That's a terrible thought to think I've got loved ones that's going to hell. They're lost and undone without God. I told Sister Shelton one day, he reached us, I've got some loved ones that are so miserable and bound up in sin, they can't stand life. They can't stand themselves. I said, the worst thing about that is they're going to die like that. They don't get saved. They're going to go to hell forever. Wasted their life here and thrown their eternity away. Jesus is waiting, reaching, trying to save the lost before it's too late. 